Hey there, Mike here again, another DIY. Uh, hope you've liked these videos. Today is going to be some information on the Best Arc BTC 500 DP plasma cutter. Uh, I'm not going to do a major review on it. There's plenty of them out there and you will be hard pressed to find any review with a negative comment about this plasma cutter. It's great. I, for the money, you're not going to find anything better. Uh, I will tell you a few things I like about it, and then I'm going to tell you real quick some differences between the three models or three generations that they've had, and then uh, mainly some tips and tricks on how to uh, use this plasma cutter. These tips and tricks, though, can be uh, the same for just about any plasma cutter. And of course, if you like this video and if you want to subscribe, you know how to do it. You know, click like uh, and subscribe and leave a comment if you want. Anyway, what do I really like about this? Obviously, the price. I mean, for the $250 to $260, depending if you get the second or third generation, uh, you're not going to find a better cutter. And most of the time, they have $15 to $40 off on Amazon discount codes and uh coupon so you can get this matter of fact i saw it about a week and a half ago forty dollars off so it would have been about 200 and eh, right at 200 dollars, maybe 210 um i like the fact that it's ready to go plug it in you're ready the air filter air separator water separator it's already built into the back of it uh you just plug your airline into it um customer service you, you're not going to beat them they're great uh the quality of the machine i've had it now for about a year I've cut all sorts of things. The thing is amazing. Uh, and of course, it can do 120 or 240. 120, you're you know you're going to be pushing it if you try to get past you know quarter inch, or uh, you know maybe into that three eighths area. You're going to be pushing it because it's only going to be able to put out about 35 amps. But if you can get 240, this thing will cut. It cuts over you know half inch like it's nothing. Uh, it does have pilot arc, which is great if you're dealing with painted material, rusty material, uh, things where you can't just scratch start it like you normally would a normal uh, one. Um, and I like the fact that it has a uh, digital controls in the front. That makes it really good. Uh, you can see your amps and your, uh, your post time. The post time on the air is after you let go of the trigger, how, much, how many seconds air is going to still blow through it to cool down the consumables. Um, now, real quick, the differences between the generation I got, which I guess you could call first generation, then second and third. The first one came with a 240 volt plug on it with a 120 adapter. The only difference I've seen in the second generation is they've kind of put a 120 regular standard uh, power cord on it with a 240 adapter. It's still using 12 gauge wire, which most people would think that's not very thick for but we're only dealing with a couple of feet of wire, so it can handle it. It's doing okay. Um, then the third generation, it did uh, get rid of the knob for post air, and it's now push button. And it also has 2T and 4T, which personally, I don't like them. I don't use it. It's not that it's bad. It's just I don't use it. 2T means you push the trigger, you cut, you let go, it stops. 4T, you push the trigger, you can let go. It's still going to be on. It's great if you're switching hands or a lot, maybe artists, people who are doing artwork, metal artwork might use it. And then you push it again, turns off. Um, other than that, there's no differences. So uh, I guess uh, first thing we'll do is get into some of the tips. And um, let's see here. So the first tip I want to mention is the ground. You've heard this by many people. You've heard it from Mike Festiva and Pete from Pete's Tools. Uh, you need to get a good ground. It doesn't have the best ground in the world. Get something like this. It's really sturdy. Uh, you can just unscrew it from the existing one and put one of these on there. But the next tip about the ground is, unlike a welder, a welder you can ground out your whole table and uh, whatever. And the electricity is gonna flow quite well, good enough for you to weld. But 
plasma cutters want as much of the current as possible. So you want this ground to be as close to the piece of material you're cutting. So if you're putting a piece on your on a table and you're clamping it down to the table, try to put your ground on that piece of metal too. If you can't because it's flat, there's nothing to say you can't put the ground on the clamp that you used to uh, put the metal down. But the point is you want to get this clamp as close to the metal that you're cutting. You don't want to like ground your table and then use your table like a welding table and use that as your ground return path. Um, second thing is on the torch. Most people know it comes actually with this type of spacer. And I have this type. I also, which it comes with, and I bought a few of them. I also bought this type here, which you can see they're straight. And then I've also uh, used it without one. I'll just take a third one. I don't try to pop these off. I just, you know, unscrew them and replace them. So I'll use this one when I'm kind of freehanding and I'm on a piece of metal and I'm just cutting where it's not straight. This one I like to use when I'm cutting straight lines and I have a guide and I'm just this way I can go right along the guide and straight and then the one where I use the insulator without a guide at all I use that for uh, when I'm doing a lot of templates and stuff where I'm going to cut out circles and things because it's really hard to work with that so definitely get yourself a couple of different kinds of uh, spacers uh, standoffs they're called and uh, that'll help you out a lot the next tip I want to give you is about the current the amperage setting the air honestly you can leave the air pretty much as high as you want to or whatever uh, the only drawback with having the air as high as the machine don't go over the 70 PSI's but the only uh, drawback with using it really high is if you happen to have a small compressor you know, it's going to use up the air a lot faster and then it's going to keep refilling. But the amps, the more amps you put in, the wider the cut's going to be. Now on big thick material, you have to have high amperage, not a big deal. Uh, can you leave it at 50 amps or 35 amps if it's a 120 all the time and high air? Sure. I do it 90% of the time that way but you need to practice. <laughs> if you start going too slow, you're actually, all those amps is actually going to melt too much metal and it's actually gonna to try to weld itself back together. Uh, also, if you're going to do any kind of cutting where it needs to be very accurate, you wanna to try to get as low of an amps so you can get a thinner line so it's more accurate instead of, it's, I'm exaggerating, but instead of like this wide of a gap, it's much thinner. So you need to experiment. It all depends on what you're cutting. Um, you have to realize the amps on this. Plasma is air and electricity combined. And the temperature of a plasma cutter reaches the same as the surface of the sun. Over 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So you have to learn how to uh, not be too slow, not be too fast. Usually when you're pulling along, the arc needs to be kind of aiming forward a little bit as you're going away from the direction you're heading. If you're going too fast, you'll know because the sparks are going to be flying up. It's not going to make it through the metal. It's going to kick back up, hurt your consumables. So when you're cutting, go fast enough until you start to see sparks fly up and then slow it down a little bit. And that's the right speed. Um, so yeah, I can keep it at 50 amps and 65 PSI of air all day long, but it, I don't really care. I'm not getting into such intricate work. I can cut, I just know to speed it up a little bit if I'm on thin metal, thick metal, well, it has to be that high anyway. Um, another trick that you need to do is back to the grounding is even though the pilot arc will cut through rust and paint and all that other stuff, you need a return path for the electricity. So even if you have this painted piece of metal, you need to at least grind or sand or something, one corner of it, so that you can put this ground clamp on and have a good electrical connection. See, a pilot arc has a small wire that goes up inside to the torch, and it is the ground. 
okay? And its purpose is to light that thing so that you can get through the rust or the paint or whatever. But that wire wasn't meant to try to pull 50 amps. It was designed to just get it going. Once it starts eating into the metal, the metal, the ground that you have, this ground on the end, that's going to take the current back to the machine. That's going to create the loop of current. But if you have this accidentally left it off or you had it on paint and rust or whatever and it's not making a good connection, then that small wire in your torch is going to be the return path and you're going to burn that wire up. Uh, is that going to blow up your machine? No, it just means pilot art won't work anymore. Uh, you'll still be able to scratch start it uh, or buy a new torch. But definitely recommend that even if it's painted, rusted, whatever, that you get a grinder or something, sand a corner off of the metal, something that you can get a good ground connection to it. So um, there you have it. I mean, the consumables on this thing are great. Uh, that's another good thing about using standoffs. It doesn't touch, so your consumables will last a little longer. Um, like I said, I'll use the one without a standoff if I'm trying to do stencils or stuff or if I'm going through really thick stuff because you'll gain that extra sixteenth of an inch uh, closer and that means you'll be able to cut a little bit thicker. So I hope this helps out. Again, it'll work for anything but the best arc. That's what I have, uh, the BTC 500 DP. Awesome machine. You can't go wrong. Best bang for the buck. And uh, like I said, there's reviews, Mike Festiva and Pete from Pete's Tools. Look them up. They're great. And again, don't forget, maybe a like and a subscribe. And I have all sorts of uh, videos. I have them on my welders, working on pickup trucks, any DIY. I'm, I'll come up with a video for it. Just check out my channel once in a while. So um, unless you have any other questions, by all means, send me a comment. And we'll talk to you later. Take care.